After nearly a decade, the United States is finally set to regain its ability to send humans into orbit from an American rocket launching from U.S. soil. Via the commercial crew program, NASA and two companies have been developing crewed spacecraft since 2010. While development is years behind schedule, one company is all but certain to claim the historic milestone of flying the first piloted commercial orbital spacecraft, SpaceX with its Crew Dragon. T-minus 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, all three engines up and burning, 2, 1, Zero and lift off the final lift off of Atlantis on the shoulders of the space shuttle. America will continue the dream. In July 2011, NASA concluded the final mission of the space shuttle program. The four person crew of Space Shuttle Atlantis's STS 135 mission was tasked with resupplying the International Space Station. During the flight, the four person crew left a small flag that also flew into space during the first space shuttle mission in 1981. In a sort of capture the flag challenge, the first American company to fly people to the station via a launch from U.S. soil gets the honor of bringing it back to Earth. Until then, NASA would have to purchase seats aboard Russia's Soyuz spacecraft to get U.S. astronauts to the ISS. By 2014, NASA ultimately selected SpaceX and Boeing to fully develop their Crew Dragon and CST-100 Starliner spacecraft, respectively. The first piloted flights were initially expected to happen in 2015. However, funding shortfalls and technical setbacks ultimately caused years worth of delays. Overall, NASA has awarded SpaceX more than $3 billion since 2010 to help develop Crew Dragon, sometimes called Dragon 2. After the final test mission, Demo 2, launches in spring of 2020, NASA and SpaceX are set to fly the first of at least six crew rotation flights with the spacecraft starting no earlier than fall of 2020. Since the company's inception, SpaceX has had the goal of flying people into space. Using its uncrewed first-generation Dragon spacecraft, and with development help from NASA, the company began regularly supplying the ISS in 2012. This spacecraft flew 20 successful missions, with several of those capsules being reused, before retiring in 2020 to make way for the upgraded Dragon 2 spacecraft. Dragon 2 has been in development under the Commercial Crew Program since 2010. While its design was initially based off the first Dragon spacecraft, it's since been significantly improved upon. Like Dragon 1, Crew Dragon has two parts, a capsule and a trunk. The capsule is 3.7 meters wide and about 4.5 meters tall, with an internal volume of about 9.3 cubic meters. Combined with the trunk, the spacecraft stretches 8.1 meters and has a total mass of about 9,500 kilograms. At the top of the capsule is a reusable nose cone that articulates on a hinge to reveal a docking port. On the sidewalls are four pairs of Super Draco engines that are only used to push the capsule away from its Falcon 9 launcher in the event of a failure. During normal in-space operations, the capsule uses the same Draco thruster system from Dragon 1. Just like its predecessor, Crew Dragon also has a Pika-X heat shield to protect the capsule during re-entry. Additionally, the capsule uses four main parachutes to assist in its splashdown in the Atlantic Ocean. The unpressurized trunk is also different from its predecessor in that it has solar cells and radiators embedded into the side of the structure rather than on deployable panels. There are also four aerodynamic fins to help stabilize the spacecraft in the event of a launch abort. Inside the capsule is space for up to seven people, however NASA only plans to utilize four seats during ISS crew rotation missions. Additionally, there's a three-screen control panel that is mostly touchscreen with only the most essential controls having a physical interface. According to SpaceX, the spacecraft has the ability to launch up to 6,000 kilograms and return up to 3,000 kilograms of crew and cargo. The spacecraft is designed to fly solo for up to a week and be in space for up to 210 days while docked at the ISS. Additionally, the spacecraft has the ability to be reused, at least with the cargo variant. Speaking of which, many of the features used for crew, such as control panels, seats, and the Super Draco engines, won't be included for cargo-only flights, which are scheduled to begin as early as late 2020. Like all Dragon spacecraft, this new generation vehicle launches atop a Falcon 9 rocket. Dragon 2, however, is only expected to be launched from Kennedy Space Center's Launch Complex 39A in Florida, which is the same pad the final space shuttle flight took off from and is also the site of the Apollo 11 launch. In a departure from historic norms, the astronauts aboard Crew Dragon are to be strapped in before the launch vehicle is loaded with fuel, which has traditionally taken hours in other rockets. 
For the Falcon 9, the super-chilled liquid oxygen and rocket-grade kerosene begins flowing into the rocket at about T-35 minutes and concludes just a few minutes before liftoff. While loading fuel with crew aboard has its dangers, SpaceX has argued, and NASA ultimately agreed, the Super Draco abort system, should anything go dangerously wrong, would allow the crew to escape via an on-pad abort. In fact, Crew Dragon has the ability to abort during any phase of the launch sequence once it is armed. Once in space, the capsule is expected to take one to two days to reach the ISS. After its mission, it can return home just as quickly, assuming the orbital paths line up with its planned splashdown zone off the coast of Cape Canaveral, Florida. Like the original Dragon spacecraft, the trunk is not designed to be recovered and is jettisoned before re-entry into Earth's atmosphere. The first major test of Crew Dragon occurred in May 2015 with a pad abort test. It would be nearly four years before the first uncrewed orbital test flight, the Demo-1 mission in March 2019, which saw the vehicle perform a full mission profile to the ISS, including the first autonomous spacecraft docking in U.S. spacecraft history. However, a major setback occurred about a month after the conclusion of the Demo-1 mission, when the capsule was placed on a test stand to static fire the Super Draco engines in anticipation of an upcoming in-flight abort test. Instead of the thrusters firing, the capsule exploded. The explosion would later be traced back to a leaking check valve. It and others like it were replaced with a burst disc. SpaceX also experienced various technical difficulties with the parachute system throughout its development, which required a redesign and re-evaluation that was only completed in early 2020. After the in-flight abort test was finally completed in January 2020, NASA and SpaceX were finally ready to fly the piloted Demo-2 mission as early as this May. Assuming all goes as planned, Spacecraft Commander Doug Hurley and Joint Operations Commander Bob Behnken are set for a mission to the ISS lasting between about 30 and 110 days. In addition to testing Crew Dragon's systems, they are set to help augment the Expedition 63 ISS crew until the first U.S. crew rotation flight is ready. Coincidentally, at the end of the mission, Doug Hurley, who was part of that crew that left that special flag aboard the ISS in 2011, will be among the crew to bring it back to Earth later this year. When Dragon launches with people, it will mark 39 years since the last time U.S. astronauts have rode into space atop a brand new vehicle. It will also mark the first time a commercial company will own a crewed orbital spacecraft. Already, SpaceX is working with other companies to fly private missions to the ISS or even just on solo flights. And once Boeing finishes development of its Starliner spacecraft, that company will have the same opportunity to fly non-NASA passengers to various places in low Earth orbit, dramatically expanding the commercial space market. What do you think about Crew Dragon? And how excited are you to see U.S. astronauts fly to space aboard a U.S. rocket from U.S. soil for the first time in nearly a decade? Let me know in the comments below where you were for that final space shuttle flight and where you plan to be for SpaceX's first crewed flight. If you haven't already, please like and share this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit the notification bell, and follow Orbital Velocity on Twitter and Facebook. You can also head over to orbital-velocity.com for even more space-related content, including a monthly newsletter called The Space Capsule. Links are in the description below. Thanks for watching, and until next time, Ad Astra.